Plenty of investors are jumping into a project or projects right now and are about to get wrecked. We need to talk about it. There's a couple of things that are happening in the wider crypto market. You can see 1.15 trillion we've dropped down. Bitcoin, 3.3%, <laughs> Ethereum, 3.2. We'll jump into those charts in a sec. There is a lot of red. And we want to talk about what's going on, obviously, with the, the debt negotiations, the ceiling. It is uh, not looking good. The media heads are really getting up in arms about it. And last time it happened, there was a 17% drop in the stock market. Obviously, we've got very low liquidity in crypto, especially Bitcoin. You can see this big candle down. Any bad news, we were at the 200-week moving average and we have dropped right through it hopefully we get back above it is looking promising here buyers are coming straight back in same deal with ethereum there having a look at the crypto bubbles there is no green neo 2.3 percent and ton plus one percent leo sideways there everything else is not looking good if we zoom out to the week biggest losers obviously hex biggest winner render Nice to see. Sui's not doing real well either. Just really quickly before we get into it, you need to know what game you're playing in this game of money. There's short-term traders, long-term investors, then there's swing traders, which is somewhere in between. Probably swing trader to long-term trader. I'm looking out to 2024, 2025. Just keep that in mind and just really quickly know this video is not financial advice. So a couple of things we need to talk about here. Bitcoin dips 5% to key support and moment of truth for crypto market. Both Bitcoin price and the total crypto market cap line up a retest to the 200-week moving average, a key bear market support line. Bitcoin fell sharply as a long-awaited retest, a key trend lines materialized. Bitcoin USD hidden 26,154. If we jump over to the chart, we can see we are 26,249. So we have retraced and come back up a little bit which is good on bitstamp it's lowest since may 12. so the day prior when upside formed the main story for the market and bitcoin was aiming for 27.5 you really need to know what your time frame is going forward and it allows you instead of being player versus players you versus yourself and being able to stack or jump in real quick and get in <laughs> get in and out real quick so buy a bit open interest already almost back to where it was before this long squeeze seems like quite a lot of longs instantly re-entering debt ceiling woos mount biggest story that's going on we're about seven days away from getting a resolution it's going to come down to the 11th hour although our medium term bias is for higher bitcoin on a deal scenario we think Bitcoin could quickly sink back with what other macro markets are implying and summarized. On a no deal scenario, however, we will easily take out the year's highs. There's definitely going to not be a no deal. I'm 99% sure of that. It'd be catastrophic for the US. A couple of other things affecting the crypto market as well. And there's some crazy stories. I want to show you this video coming up shortly of this deep fake um, that is not good for the crypto industry in the slightest. Bitcoin Ether Slippers UK core CPI reaches high since 92. Annualized three month trend in UK core CPI is running at a whopping 13.6%. The hotter than expected UK CPI rate comes in at 6.8, the highest since 92 against an expected figure of 6.2. The figures are higher than expected for the third month in a row. Not good. Damning hopes of an economic recovery. As such, it is likely to add to the pressure on the Bank of England to keep raising the interest rates in the coming months. They could also raise them over in the States as well. Just really quickly, if you are jumping into a project today, do you know who the CEO is? What are their past projects? What's the inflation? Who holds all the coins there? If you haven't asked yourself those questions, stop really quickly. Analyze what you're doing. And history doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. If you've been stuffed in the past, be careful jumping into projects like that. That's my PSA. 
I love how the China Central Television is called CCTV. Anyway, they air a crypto segment in Rare Move. So we've sort of gone through a couple of bad things. We've got a couple of good things here as well as we move into 24, 25. This could be a huge catalyst for crypto, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum. So the CCTV programming has an audience of over 1 billion within mainland China. Largest state broadcaster catering audience over 1 billion. Interestingly, nothing overtly negative was said about cryptocurrencies during a 98 second segment. What they've done is some praise the allowance crypto to be mentioned in state media, including Binance CEO, CZ. It's a big deal. The Chinese speaking communities are buzzing. Historically, coverages like these lead to bull runs, he said on Twitter. They, we've got another story about China getting big into crypto as well. Through Hong Kong, Bitcoin and Ethereum will be allowed. That is, could potentially bring in a massive amount of liquidity for us. So check this out. Shout out to Benny. Now, let's carry on. Chinese city launches a government-backed metaverse platform. Then we'll get into this AI deep fake. It's insane. The platform aims to consolidate the resources of academic institutions and enterprises in China and bolster research efforts in areas related to the metaverse. So... China going big into the metaverse, it is mainly going to be uh, for academia, education, schooling. We've got commerce, healthcare, and entertainment. But they do talk about the, necessi the necessity of establishing industry standards for the metaverse. Tongue tied, 5 a.m. My apologies. Bear with me. Smash us a like. Now, the crypto markets recoil from Yellen, Janet Yellen. She's incredible, isn't she? About the debt ceiling in passe. Janet Yellen reiterated her comments from just three days ago about the US running out of cash if lawmakers can't reach an agreement. Crypto and other asset markets dropped. Digital assets traded down sharply after Yellen said the US could run out of money as soon as June 1st. June 1st is also when Hong Kong opens up crypto trading, although they haven't approved any companies yet to be able to offer that service, but we'll see. Things can move very slowly and then suddenly. Upcoming reports that are worth mentioning will be the 2 p.m. release of the FOMC minutes, along with the U.S. Personal Consumption Index, the PCE data, to be released on Friday. Definitely keep you up to date on that one. That's going to be a huge deciding factor. And the ongoing debate, raise it or not raise it, it's noise, they will raise it. It's just posturing. They need to be able to see like they are doing the good thing. Now, more bullishness and then this deep fake video is insane. So hang out for that one. Listen, Bitcoin holding has never been more popular. More Bitcoin than ever has been held for at least a year, according to Glassnode, a potentially bullish sign. We talked about this briefly yesterday. Make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date and it helps out the channel to get more reach. Appreciate each and every one of you. The proportion of Bitcoin that's been held for at least a year has climbed to a record 68%. That's uh, data from Glassnode. Shows 55% uh, of Bitcoin has been held for at least two years and 40% for three years as well. Incredible. People are really understanding what HODL means. Hold on for dear life. Uh, hold on for the dear long term, but hold on for dear life. Just basically not jumping in and jumping out. And there's no problem short term trading or swing trading. Holding it over a longer period of time works better for most people, but definitely you do you. The trend is bullish in so far it means that higher prices are ahead in the cycle and any reticence to sell from current hodlers could result in a mini supply squeeze. This probably won't play out overnight, especially with all the debt drama going on. People are very unwilling to hold with the Bitcoin halving coming up 10 and a half months roughly. Maybe a tiny little bit longer. People aren't selling. Supply gets cut in half. Bang. Off to the races. 
it is going to be very exciting, but we don't know what's going to happen between now and then. Um, you know, a Black Swan event, by definition, is unknown, but they still happen, and there is... Uh, it's hard whether I should say it or not, but on Twitter, with uh, the World Health Organization saying it could get a whole lot worse than what happened in 2020. So as that story progresses, they are already seeding the global consciousness consciousness with their propaganda and everything is in plain sight for us to see but we'll see i'm not sure whether that was a a real um statement by them so i won't report on it too much we'll i'll dive into that and get the facts for you uh he did add that looking at long-term holder supply metrics is not necessarily useful for short-term price signals fair enough now, getting into this AI deep fake story, this is pretty important, especially if you are using a centralized exchange. Obviously, we had this debacle with Ledger over the last week and potentially sending out your seed phrase. There was another video where they said if they got a subpoena, they would have to hand over those coins. So they said, don't worry though, well, keys, and then they'd be able to access your coins. Most people aren't gonna get a subpoena, which, is true but you never know what will happen in the future so not your keys not your coins whatever way it works to hold for yourself and have your proper risk mitigation strategies but centralized exchanges are starting to look very very unsafe we're seeing that move more and more but with ai coming out the technology it's getting so advanced that deep fakes may soon become undetectable by human verifier and you need to um, be human verified when you're signing up with these exchanges as well. So deep fake technology used by crypto fraudsters to bypass KYC verification. Crypto exchanges such as Binance is only going to get more advanced. We're going to watch this video in a sec. This is not CZ. This is an AI deep fake. The hacker will look for a normal picture of the victim online somewhere based on that using deep fake tools are able to produce videos to do the bypass. They could call up, say, hey, I've lost my information. They'll say, hey, no worries, let's do a KYC. They've got all the fake documents. They've got the AI. They pretend to be you, access to your coins. Another reason not to use a centralized exchange. Some of the verification requires the users, for example, to blink their left eye or look to the left or to the right, look up or down. The deep fakes are advanced enough today that they can actually execute those commands. However, Sue believes the fake videos are not yet at a level where they can fool the human operator, though AI will overcome them over time. So it's not something we can always rely on. Let's watch this video. I'll bring it up full screen for you and just listen and, and see how real it is. The voice, not 100% right, but check it out. Hello, everyone sees Z in touch. I want to tell you about the Binance trading telegram channel with which I have been working for a very long time. I want to wish you more profits. If you are trading, then trade only with us. We know our business and make huge profits for the entire audience. If you have any questions, please contact the Binance Wayne channel administrator. Hello, everyone sees Z in touch. How crazy is that, hey? That's <laughs> uh, it's pretty wild video. Yes, it's not 100% there, but people that are jumping into crypto and they hear about CZ, they've seen his photos, they're like, okay, I'll, I'll jump into that. If it's too good to be true, for sure it's too good to be true. And if you're playing a longer term, the gains that you can make in crypto are so wild, you don't need to jump into the speculation nonsense. So be careful, especially next year, as we really ramp up, this stuff is gonna be absolutely insane. Ethereum, both a security and a commodity, at least it can be. Uh, this is by the former CFTC commissioner. So Dan uh, Berkowitz, yeah, I think that's right. So who is also the former general counsel at the SEC said that it's legally possible for ETH to fall under the jurisdiction of both regulatory agencies. 
Gary Gensler, led SEC, hasn't explicitly provided ETH with a designated legal category. Because we love Gensler, said in an oversight hearing in April that everything but Bitcoin should be deemed a security and has refused to further elaborate. Uh, Berkovitz explained the confusion arises because commodities aren't purely physical items like wheat or oats and that anything that falls under the purview of a futures contract can technically be defined as a commodity. Alternatively, um, alternatively uh, he said that a security which is defined by the Securities Act and the Exchange Act and includes things like notes and investment contracts can also be the subject of a futures contract which then places under the purview of the CFTC as well a couple of people here disagreed with them um, i don't see anything in the case law that tells me that some string of digits that operates on a blockchain can natively just be a security said lloyd it is kind of weird question to be asking is this digital asset a security or not i think you should be asking is this digital asset being sold as part of a securities transaction that depends on the facts and circumstances taking it by case by case basis um People obviously don't agree or don't want to agree with it. It's going to keep unfolding. Are safe with Bitcoin. Ethereum will probably slip through at the end of the day. But we'll see what happens, especially with the election year coming up. Let me just stop that. Everybody knows about this. Just one paragraph I want to read um, with presidential candidate Kennedy. He vows to defend Bitcoin against invasive surveillance. And I'll just get down to it. This was when he was at uh, Bitcoin Miami. As President Kennedy told the audience, I will make sure that your right to hold and use Bitcoin is inviolable and I will defend the right of self-custody. Not only would Kennedy protect the right to hold Bitcoin, he assured the crowd he also pledged to uphold the right to run a private node, saying that KYC requirements should be applied at the level of banks and exchanges, not at the level of nodes. That's absolutely fantastic. And it's become a political issue. And Bitcoin is pretty small, like the, the whole cryptocurrency market cap. And that's why I bring it up every day. It's only at 1.15 trillion dollars companies are this big yeah this is the whole cryptocurrency market cap bitcoin takes up pretty much 50 percent of that then ethereum and then we go into stable coins and the rest lower market cap more room for movement uh for sure but crypto is such a small industry to have presidential candidates going after it backing us it's absolutely fantastic to see Obviously, uh, the unofficial Bitcoin CEO, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy, is talking about BRC20 um, uses may be illegal. He isn't completely against them, claiming that partly comes down to the use case and partly to how they are perceived. A couple of things he said there, he has embraced ordinals as a positive development on the Bitcoin network, although he said many of the early use cases aren't terribly serious and veer towards being more speculative. No shit. Um, if BRC20 tokens are viewed as fungible tokens to issue unregistered securities, there's a lot of objection to that because it's unethical, it's legal, and you can't blame the community for objecting to that. What if I was using them to tokenize all of the stocks and ETS trading on NASDAQ so that individuals can take personal custody of their shares of stock instead of leaving them locked up with a centralized custodian, he said, if it was presented that way, then Bitcoiners would love it. And last thing here. Now, I got into Bitcoin uh, for, for freedom, for the potential for hard money, among many other reasons. And Bitcoin mining is doing good things, even though it says it's so bad for the environment. Everyone comes after it using flare gas, for example. Is great. There are patents out there because everyone wants to build these walled gardens. Just open source it. That's the ethos of crypto. But these companies are trying to sue each other um, in regards to patent infringement for using that excess energy or the flare gas to be able to mine Bitcoin as well. And they will. They're a business, they're a corporation, a company, whatever. And all they want is profits. In the space, it'd be nice just to see if they come up with the technology, send it out to everyone, they're still going to make money. 
on it. Obviously, they want to sell and license it. Let everyone use it. More people mine Bitcoin, make a profit, protect the network. Incredible stuff. We'll see you on the next video. If you can do us a favor, hit subscribe. Have a beautiful day. Be blessed. Peace.